Hello, welcome pen friends. I can't believe it's already time for a progress report for January 2023, but it is the middle of the month and I have written with my eight pens uh, for two weeks now. So I do have quite a bit in my ink journal to talk about and show you. And ongoingly, I'm working on the um, little school pen project too. So it's getting pretty interesting. So we'll get right in my ink journal first. This is the Tamoy River uh, Bond Travel Gear. It's 68 GSM Tamoy uh, River paper that I really, really like that I, I start in for everything. And so we'll start in there. <clears throat> And I've already got uh, grades, but I covered them because I wanted to just kind of start and uh, cover everything first. Then we'll talk about how things got graded. So I'm using my Knox Sinclair Purple Splatter. Uh, it's the Sinclair R, and it's the Knox and uh, Rickshaw collaboration. So I've got a little two pen koozie in there and I've got room for more pens but I've stuck with the eight because I, I'm just pretty pretty excited about the school pen project so I'll show you a couple of the pens I have just recently purchased at the end uh, so that we have pens ahead to look at but first up is the Kaigalu and thank you for all the help in pronouncing that I had no clue <laughs> This is the Kaigaloo 3, um, 316A with a medium nib. I still haven't figured out what the colorway is, but it's it's beautiful. That much I will say. It's beautiful acrylic, and I, I love it. So um, I've got diamine ochre in it. We can remove this because I'll put it right where I can see it. So if I have to say it again. <laughs> um, this is the card for the uh, ink. And I really love this combination. It's... Uh, this is an ink I know really well. It flows well and it's a nice brown. It's got a lot of shading. I trust it and I like it. And it looks really good in this pen. It picks up on some of the color of the uh, the pen itself. So it's been really, really pretty to, to work with. Now, I will say that now it's been a couple weeks um, and things got busy too. So it's not just the pen's fault, but the pen does need priming quite often after it sits for a day or two. Um, but so far I've been able to revive it quickly. And I, you know, you know what I mean? If you work with fountain pens, it hasn't been a case of having to, you know, clean it out and start over or even run water. I usually can just put just a little water on my fingertip and you know, kind of work with it, and then it's it's drawing up again, or I just prime the feed by um, going in and just gently letting a little more ink go, th you know, turning it, letting it go up through to the feed. But that has happened, so I was interested in that. It really hasn't been a problem because it's a quick fix. It hasn't been anything that was too hard. So I did a little writing sample with it. I did the... Um, uh, <laughs> chromatography down here uh, of the ink but what I realized as I was going through this month was I'm familiar with all these inks so it was more about the pens this month because these pens were almost all new to me gosh they were all new to me except for the uh, the two gold nib pens the the Pilot um, Vanishing Point and the Platinum 3776. So I was dealing with six new pens and two that I was familiar with. So I picked inks I knew that I could trust. So there's not a whole lot to say this time about the ink itself, just the combination, you know, how to do in this particular pen. And I think this is a really good combination for the nib and, you know, feed and the pen and everything. So it's been a real good experience. Just that little bit of recognizing that, well, I'm juggling eight pens, and so it kind of makes sense that I'm, uh, if I neglect this for a day or two, it's going to, you know, need a little priming. So that's really not that unusual, though. And then next up was my beautiful new Twisby Diamond 580 um, Iris. And I chose the Mont Blanc Psychedelic Purple. This has just been no no mystery here. This has been absolutely wonderful. I've written a lot of letters. I'm trying to catch up, and it doesn't feel like I ever will. But I probably will. One, uh, one time last year, 2022, I actually caught up, meaning I didn't have another letter in my, you know, the file and unless I lost one. So I would not put that past me right now. It's been really 
a struggle with organization lately. Um, but I said, in addition to looking lovely, this pen and ink is great together. Yeah, I've used this a lot. And I, I just, I love the color. But I did do a little um, extra notes down here because for anybody that's looking for um, a similar purple in the nib, um, don't don't look at this. This is the uh, this pen where I wrote right here. And I didn't actually have the same nib. But I went and got the... Uh, the Speedball C4, and I did with both uh, Royal Purple and Psychedelic Purple. Let me lift that up for you. Um, and they're just so much alike. Like I said, don't just disregard that line there because that's not a direct comparison. These two are this and this. And I so I feel like if you are sad because Mont Blanc Psychedelic Purple can't be found, uh, try to find some um, Twisby Royal Purple, which I think is easier to find right now. And I think you'll be happy. It's, you know, it's not a bells and whistle ink. It's just a beautiful, bright, um, vibrant uh, color. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Psychedelic color. Yeah. Yeah. It's bright, but in it's, uh, it's not, you know, like a chromo shader or anything like that. It does have shading, but it's, it's pretty straightforward purple. It's just a lovely color. It doesn't have shimmer. It doesn't have a bunch of crazy sheen, nothing like that. But that's why I, I, I believe they look so similar in a nib. Um, psychedelic purple has is, is got a slightly different tone if you really study them in splatters and stuff. And I did a video on that. But if you are looking at how it looks coming out of a nib to write with, I think you'll be happy with that. Okay, and then next up is the Waterman Expert. This was a real surprise to me how much I like this pen. Of course, it's beautiful. Um, but I don't normally like fine nib pens, but this pen has uh, not that much feedback. It's really smooth nib. Um, and uh, yeah, it does say fine. I was really surprised because it actually kind of felt more like a medium and it's really nice. I can only imagine what their medium is like. So, and this is my first Waterman and I just popped the cartridge right in. I believe it's a uh, Waterman Mysterious Blue, because that's what the other cartridges were, but I could be wrong on that. I did the chromatography, and it, it's just a lovely blue. Um, I love it. Let's see, really impressed with this pen. Not many fine nibs win me over, but this is super smooth. Yeah, just repeating myself there. I was making chicken soup that day. Okay. Oh, and talking about my Fitbit, which is plugged in right now. I don't have it on because it was ready to be plugged in, but I'm enjoying the Fitbit for how much I'm sleeping or not sleeping <laughs> and uh, for steps. So I, I can make goals and I can try to get more steps in. In fact, it buzzes my wrist and tells me to get up. So that's really good for me. Um, oh, okay. I didn't have a card on that because that's a cartridge. So yeah, that explains that. A lot of times I, I go in and like harvest what's left of the cartridge and uh, do go ahead and make these little tiles for it, but I really haven't had the time for that. We've had trips and and appointments and things like that this week. So, but I probably will eventually because I'd like to, um, you know, see what it looks like on a tile. I always like that. So next up is an unfortunate thing because I wish I would have thought about it and made sure that the two pens that I have inked with writer's blood were face to face uh, I it just irritates me but they're not so we can do some flipping but the first one is the pilot vanishing point um, this one in medium and uh, I've had a little bit of a struggle finding inks that I like in this pen you know where it's just nice and you know flowing right along and this is one that flows right along all right in fact it's one of the first times that I've ever felt like it was a too much ink flow. The writer's blood to me was too much ink flow in the medium vanishing point. But then when we got over to the platinum 3776, it was a different story. It was just right and you could see the color better. That's where I, though I'm frustrated because if only they were, you know, I mean, that's not going to be easy to compare like this but maybe you could see it just let down so much of the ink with the uh, vanishing point that it became almost black and it took away that nice uh, 
you know, you get a nice subtle shading with this ink, with this uh, drier nib. It's a it's a broad nib, this one, but it's more like a medium in uh, <laughs> in other you know pens that I'm used to. So I I really liked it best in here, and it surprised me. So I think I'll stick with Sailor Grenade in this pen, and I will you know I'll probably pair this Writer's Blood with this platinum because I like how it feels. It changes the, the writing experience for me. And um, other than just being afraid of uh, dropping or cracking this uh, section again, which, you know, could happen, but they were really good about replacing it when it happened, um, you know, a year or two ago. So anyway, I liked it better. I liked Writer's Blood better in the 3776 so that was kind of fun I don't normally do two the same month in the same pen but every once in a while I do usually it'd be an extra pen but this time I decided right off the bat to do that and then next up is the little um, Caveco Sport which has changed my mind about Cavecos. Um I am seeing that if you get a good nib on a Caveco, you, you have a really great experience. And this is a really good nib. It's a double broad. Um, I went over in the other video about who gave me each pen. I, I don't want to try doing that again because it'll slow me down and maybe even stop me because of the perfectionism. But I will link that other video where I showed you and, and went over all of that. Um, but this is excellent. This with this Diamine Spiced Apple. Let's see. Here it is from the ink vent is just gorgeous. Even if you can't see the shimmer, when I forget to kind of, um, you know, agitate this, then I can't see the shimmer. And let's see, how are we doing with the ink? Well, yeah, I haven't done an, as much writing as <laughs> I'd like. Um, I've been, been what they call busy. I don't like that word, but um, anyway, if I remember to kind of do this and get it uh, shook up a little, then I get a lot more shimmer on the writing samples. But even without it, this is a gorgeous red. It's just so pretty. Apologize. I don't know. Oh, I sometimes don't even want to reread my <laughs> entries here. <laughs> well, I had apology on my mind. I'm not sure who um, that I needed to apologize to. This was my favorite ink from the 2022 ink event. The shimmer is great and splatters and heavy writing swatches. Yeah, but just just the juiciness of this double bra nib um, and this lovely ink, which does give you shimmer, but it's awfully hard sometimes to catch it in the writing sample. It, it's really hard with indoor lighting and stuff. <laughs> um, afternoon lighting but this has been great I love it <clears throat> we'll go over grades here in a minute and then okay the next pen is the Narwhal Original Plus in gold so it's got like a gold uh, kind of a streaks through through it um, with a double broad and it is a vac vac filler and this is this was a lovely combination. I think this pen does need kind of a wet ink, and uh, Pilot Orochizuku Murasaki Shikabu uh, has done well in here. It feels it it feels just about like a Twisby broad, not a double broad, but that's probably you know just the variance in the brand. And it's my first one, and I'm just getting used to it. But I love it, and I actually used quite a bit of the ink too. So um, I, I seem to pick it up quite a bit because, you know, I love purple. And I was trying constantly to, to write with both the brighter purple. Um, well, again, they're not. <laughs> yeah, they're not together, so I can't show them, you know, side by side. I need to think those kind of things through before I start. Um, because the psychedelic purple is much brighter, but this is still a lovely purple. Very nice. I had a little bleed back through from the red because I used a water brush. Now that was a little bit silly. Um, I probably could have done my splatters on one side and my uh, samples on the other just by like gluing in like another sheet with splatters. But I didn't really think about that until I was halfway through. And I like to keep things consistent so I didn't do it. Okay, so last but not least is the little uh, Pelican Pelicano school pen 
and it has the cartridge that came with it when I purchased it in it. And I have just had so much fun with this one. I take it everywhere. I put it in my little, um, it's a rickshaw koozie case with the, the um, strap on it. And, and it's just enough room for a cell phone, a wallet, a pen, and a mask stuck in the, you know, because everywhere you go is a different rule nowadays. You, you never know if you're going to have to wear one or not. So I always carry one. And this goes right down into there, like beside the wallet and in front of the phone case. So it's really, it goes everywhere with me because I really love this pen. Um, it's really reliable and it's writing on cheap paper um, without bleeding through. But I, I don't want to give the whole review now. I want to separate that out so that we can all kind of enjoy that process as we go through. So I probably better stick to just the regular coverage. Um, I have a converter for this pen. So the next fill will be in that. Wait a minute, I have a converter for that. Oh yeah, I found one that fit in good. I don't think there'll be any leaks. I haven't tested it yet. I am going to put Parker Blue Black. <coughs> Excuse me, when I get to that point. I decided I needed to pick an ink that I could live with in, in any of them. And I didn't want to go for a bright blue. So I, I uh, this is going to be what... This box here has the Parker quink blue black and I've got the tile somewhere <laughs> yeah I wonder what I did with that oh dear me it's disappeared but it's here and it'll come out when I do the review because if I've lost it I'll make another one but it's definitely this uh, darker than than here you can see that yeah you can see that through the camera and this is the uh, the Parker quink blue black chromatography and this is the pelican cartridge so you see what you're dealing with and I, I don't dislike this but I wrote with blue for years this exact shade of blue that came in the Schaefer cartridges and you know my mom would share her cartridges with me so it kind of it doesn't make me ill or anything but it almost does it almost makes me feel like no no I don't want to see that color so I can live with this this blue black here is more blue than black and yet, so that gives it a brightness and a darkness that's acceptable. Um, not sure if every single pen is going to wind up with this running through it or not. I have to find my groove, my um, kind of, uh, I got to get the wind in my sails on the project. And it usually takes a couple of uh, uh, reviews or a couple of um, a ways into the project before I get a good pattern that I want to stick with. But, so I'm just showing you kind of preliminary thoughts. And I just, I love this pen. Um, if I wasn't trying to get so many to test out, I probably already have more of this. And yet, I think I like the looks of the little Pelican, Pelicano Junior better. Because I could live without this little wraparound part. It's cute. It's probably, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But but this writes so reliably, and it's closer to a broad nib. It writes on the pen and gear paper without bleeding through. It writes on my little cheap uh, family dollar paper, which all this will have to come out later. So I think we better get to the report card because I've got a job I've got to go do in less than an hour. So, all right, let's go back to the report card. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Probably am. Because it's just talking. It's not so much changing of, of the scene. So it feels weird. And I don't have my microphone either. So it feels weird. But I hope you can hear me. I've gotten pretty good feedback on that. So, Okay, so the first pen, the, the Kaigaloo uh, 316 with a medium nib um, and diamine ochre. I gave it an A- minus because of those. Um, I let it just, you know, I didn't fill in right here where it kind of did that so that's that's kind of what happens but then you're right back with the next few letters if you just um you know give a little bit of a nudge to the nib or you um feed it a little but still um it's got me wondering there may be an ink like maybe writer's blood would you know power through that without any kind of you never know or even okay we're still not looking at a pilot nib so this is brand new brand new pen brand new experience so I'll, I'll be trying different inks then next up the twisby diamond 580 um iris with the psychedelic purple that gets an a plus 
so so wonderful the reliable flow beautiful and joy to write with yeah i just i mean i just like looking at that pen um i still can't believe that i have it you know um i'm so happy that that i got that for christmas that was the right thing for me to ask for i think and then the waterman expert with a fine nib fine nib pen got an a that's really good i mean it's smooth it's a beautiful pen it's a comfortable grip um yeah it's really comfortable it's it's not slippery has a little bit of a place right there i don't know if you could see it and i just my my grip is very happy with it so that's that was really neat you know um i tend to end up you know being most excited about demonstrators so whenever it's a a black kind of classic looking pen like that i often wonder is it am i gonna like it you know but i really did so next up, I could slow down. I, I probably have file space on this camera, but okay. Is Pilot Vanishing Point with a gunmetal um, and rhodium finish, medium nib, diamine writer's blood. I put a B plus because it puts down too much ink. This combination, this diamine writer's blood and this nib, it's just like, whoa, slow down. And that is never me, but... Uh, it is with this because I want to be able to see the color and I could do that so much better with the next pen which is the uh, the 3776 uh, niece century niece sorry there's a lot to that name it's a broad nib um, and I gave that an A um, because of the nice flow I could see the color and I felt like it was just a really good, it, it, I said it takes out the feedback, <laughs> which is a good thing for me. Um, I don't like much feedback. And I, I know that many people say it's a good thing, and it probably is, but I just kind of like a real slippery writing experience. <laughs> and then next for the Caveco Sport. Okay, this little pen, this is a shocker to me, but this is the only one that inspired an A++, like, <laughs> just like I don't think this pen will ever be empty kind of feeling and I know you know what I mean if you're a fountain pen person it's like I don't care whether the color matches the pen I don't care it's just like this pen will probably always be filled because I love the nib the way it um, writes and I, I love these pens I just my only thing was I had two bad nibs um, and the first one came in the very beginning of my fountain pen experience so that's a lot harder to forget because you're so new and you're not wanting to spend more on a pen. You're going from a $3 gel pen to a $15 to $20 pen and you're nervous as it is. So a $26 pen that that wouldn't uh, write um, was what I encountered with my first Caveco Sport. And this is not the case with this one. I, I'll want this always inked up with something. So... Um, it changes my willingness to to want to get another Caveco. Okay, so then next the Narwhal. Um, let's see, I buried it over here. Narwhal Original Plus Vac Filler. Um, I gave it an A. I said it's beautiful. Um, I love being able to see the ink, that purple ink, uh, in there. Now I did go with a safe ink. I, I'm sure that the Murasaki Shikabu will clean right out of that. Um, I'm a little funny about that with even with my ecos. I don't I kind of don't want to like use some something like a this that I'm not going to be able to get out of it easily. Maybe that's laziness too. I don't know. But beautiful. Next fill needs to be darker ink. Nib for BB may need slight tuning. Okay, I don't know. I wouldn't tune a nib at all till I'd run several different inks through, practice with it and got familiar with it more. Um yeah, I don't mess with nibs anymore until I'm sure that I need to. So we won't, we'll visit that again later. And then last but not least, the Pelican Pelicano Medium, the red one with a cartridge, A+. I just, I think this says it all. I love it. I use it constantly and I take it everywhere. And the review is coming. So I'll try not to go on and on about it today. So, <laughs> so this, you know. I would say the two pens that kind of have me the most charmed are these two. The Caveco Sport and the Mellow Blue. Did I say that? I may not have even said that. Yeah, it's Mellow Blue with a double broad. 
and this pelican, um, you know, child's pen basically with a medium nib and a cartridge popped into it, which gosh, you know, but yeah, I haven't wanted to go anywhere without it. And I was really hoping I wouldn't lose it and I haven't lost it yet. So, you know, it's taking pens out of the house. It's always something that you have to think about. So that's it for the report card. But I did want to show you and, uh, you know, give a big thank you because I actually had uh, something really exciting happen last week. One of, uh, one of the viewers sent a $50 gift card for the channel. Um, and it's from Penfriend MS from Illinois, $50 Amazon card. And so I ended up, okay, I had this one and this one. I ended up ordering, getting three pens. I, I think I added to the order just slightly, but I got the Lamy ABC pen. And then um, this is a Schneider, <laughs> I can't remember the name of it right now. It begins with a C and it is, it has a 1.1 stub on it. Calissima or something like that. Don't quote me. I'll have to put it in the description. Um, so this is interesting and it falls in our category, I think. And then this is across, I think it's across Bailey, but I um, should have done some notes, I guess, before I tried to do this. I think all I was trying to show you was that, um, you know, to say the big thank you for the the channel money that was sent, the, the donation, and also to say that I've been collecting these pens. So um, this is the Fabric Castile Grip Edition Silver Glam and Medium. I saw this on uh, Pen Friend Manda's channel, and I could not um, uh, pass by it. I I saw it on uh, Van S, and I ordered one. Um, got a cartridge down in there, and I know I have uh, converters around for this pen because I've got two Fabric Castile pens that I kind of swap. Um, their converters also fit the Rotring pens. So anyway, this will be part of our, all, all these, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's seven now that we have in-house. And uh, my original plan was to have uh, 12, but it's kind of looking like with, we've got some movement. We've got some uh, <laughs> additional ideas and lists going and, and channel money coming next week too. So it looks like there may be, it's possible that I'll do two school pens and only five or six regular pens, you know, for my letter writing. Um, you know, I may, you know what I mean? I'll keep it at eight but or seven and, and subtract, you know, however many of these I do. Um, like for February, maybe I'll do the Pelican Twist and the Pelican um, Pelicano Junior, something like that. Or maybe I'll skip it up a little because we just did a Pelican. We'll see. We might even do a vote. I only have one more thing I want to show you today, and that is that I did put together a, a little notebook to serve as the, I call it a dock or a, like, this is going to be like the brain central of this project. And it is a, uh, a Midori, I think it's a B, B6 notebook. And so this is going to be where everything goes. I've got a calendar. That I put in. I've got an index. I started by doing kind of a little, um, I guess I left a lot of room for index, a little project overview. Um, we'll probably look at this more depth when I do the first review, but <clears throat> basically let's focus on the goals or the focus areas. I want to do 12 school pens minimum, you know, maybe we'll do more, but, um, and then I'll do the monthly, mid-month progress report. It'll be part of the progress report. And then uh, we'll review the pen and uh, include paper and ink tests and findings. Like I have a lot more um, tests already from this one, but I want to save those for the review. So um, that's, that's my plan. Okay, so let's see. The phone rang, so now I'm not sure where I was. But... Um, like I said, I'm still kind of formulating how I'm going to go about it, but it definitely, you know, as part of the learning process, want to review the pens so that I can talk about the things that I find out. Um, some of these, uh, you know, they probably cost a little more here in the United States because they're imported. 
Um, but I want to talk about cost and availability. And I'll be using channel money to purchase the pens, the cartridges, the converters, whatever I need. Um, but I, you know, I haven't gotten too wild about buying converters because I never do. I usually try to see, well, what works with what? And can I refill cartridges? Because I don't want to go, you know, crazy till I know how I like a pen anyway. Um, so there's more here, but we'll talk about it later. And then um, each pen will be... Uh, you know, logged into here, but I'm just getting my feet under me as far as, you know, what I want to look at and see. Um, and that's kind of the way I am. I'm not, I'm not all that methodical about things. I, I just either I write with a pen and love it and can't stand to not have it inked up or it just isn't quite, you know, that interesting. And, you know, I don't know. I, I'm more likely to go, um, just by, whether I'm writing with it. And this this one, I, I'm really excited about. I'm writing in everywhere. Um, grocery list, uh, in my journal, in my Midori. Um, I mean, in my, this is a Midori, but in my Hobonichi planner. In fact, I was like, oh, here I am writing in blue. And I usually write in black. So that's another consideration. I could, I could get cartridges for this that are black. But I'd like to slow down because obviously I've got, several pens thanks to the you know the generous viewer and uh the channel money which has been flowing quite quite well lately considering everything you know with advertising and the economy like it is i was surprised i really am surprised we had a really good month in both november and december just shocked me um so we've got money to get things that are needed for the channel so I'm, I'm excited. But anyway, I was real happy about this book because this is a, a couple pages from a Unity um, brochure. Uh, not brochure. It was a little uh, pamphlet. But I was all done with it. And I'd cut out the prayers I wanted to keep and stuff. So I just could hardly cover any of this up. I just thought it was so pretty. I did put a little cat down here in the corner, a <laughs> sticker. And I covered something that was down here. It, might, it was something that didn't really go there, so I put a sticker. But you'll be seeing more of this book because it'll it'll serve as our headquarters or um, our docking station for, for these school pens. And, you know, no matter how busy I get, pens ground me and get me normal and get me communicating with friends and writing letters and journaling and taking notes. Um, so, in fact, maybe... The busier I am, the more I need to carry my pens with me and my notebooks with me. And, you know, I need to remember that. Just, you know, it's okay to be busy. <laughs> and you've got to write, too. So, okay. I will see you on the next video. This is getting really long. And hopefully, hopefully this new phone is, you know, hardy enough to upload the video. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say about the pens that you're writing with. Are you making discoveries this month, too? Um... This is the only way I can do it, I think. is I just don't slow down. If I, if I wasn't uh, coming on here to talk about my progress report, chances are I'd have 40 pens inked up and I'd only be using a couple of them because I, you know, quickly discover which ones I really like to write with. But this way it kind of, it helps me to use a pen longer and not make snap judgments about it being great or terrible, but to get to know the little nuances about the ink and about the pen, because that's where the fun is, really. Um, if I just wanted a pen that wrote every time, I suppose I could have stuck with gel pens, but I really want the really exciting um, differences that each pen can provide. So I better go, because now I'm being rambly, and my cat went to sleep even <laughs> listening to me. So I'll see you next time. Bye for now.